Our, our little girl, Ava Barry, has Dravet syndrome. Um, that's the name of her diagnosis. The life expectancy or quality of life one can expect with Dravet is short and painful or pain filled. And I suppose cannabis has given us um, hope, really. We lived in fear. Every day we lived in fear and of seizures and, and, and what would happen to Ava next, the next hour, the next day. Before October 2016, my daughter Ava, uh, she would have experienced probably over 20 seizures most days, or you know, she might have 10 one day, she might have five another day. That would be the tonic clonic seizures, and on top of that, there'd be absences, drops, and every other kind of um, issue. Um, since starting uh, CBD oil last October, her life has completely changed and I would without, without hesitation say that medicinal cannabis has set her free. Um, she has had only a handful of seizures each month since October and in the school which she attends inside in Ballin College, she absolutely loves her school. The teachers did a report there um, based on what she's been like since she began the CBD oil. And they said that since October, Ava has made more progress than she has done in the previous two years. And nothing has changed, nothing has altered other than the introduction of medicinal cannabis into my daughter's life. Natural cannabis has two main components, THC, which is called psychoactive, as it's called, that gives you the high, and CBD, which is not psychoactive, and it, it doesn't give you a high. Uh, and they're both medicinal. Uh, and for most conditions, you probably need a combination of the two. There are some things that need, that respond better to CBD, like epilepsy, like anxiety, and some probably respond better to THC, probably like chronic pain. There's two rare sorts of childhood, very severe childhood epilepsy called Dravet syndrome and Lennox-Gastaut syndrome. And there's very strong evidence that CBD uh, works almost miraculously in those conditions. Should cannabis uh, be available for those who need it medicinally? Yes, of course it should. It's been around for centuries. It's a well-used, well-tried product that is remarkably safe with a lot of benefits and very few risks. And yes, it definitely should be used for medicinal purposes. I don't see the justice in cherry picking a few groups of uh, patients to, to gain access to such a wonderful medicine and not allowing other groups of people access to it. I think that Gino Kenny's legislation um, or his bill that's after going through the, the first stages in the doll at this stage is more relevant now than it ever was because there are so many other people out there that really do need this and the government need to broaden out the criteria or the, the groups of patients that are allowed and let people have the option to use medicinal cannabis for themselves or their child or their father or mother or uncle or aunt or whoever. Is it political? Yes, of course it's political. Um, Cannabis is, is a political entity and it's being forced through a lot of, uh, not just in this country but across the world, forced through hoops that if it was a proper uh, medicine through medicines it wouldn't have to jump through those hoops and the restrictions placed upon it are uh, to a large extent political restrictions, I don't think there's any doubt about that. Why should we, be people be insisting on using other medicines first until they fail when those medicines themselves are more troublesome with more side effects and more problems than cannabis? That's, that's, to me, that's illogical. Um, if it's going to be used, I think it should be used potentially as a first-line drug in some of these conditions and not a, a fourth or fifth or sixth-line drug when you've been forced to try things that are actually more harmful to you. The HPRA report is attempting to severely restrict uh, the conditions uh, for which medicinal cannabis will be allowed. Our bill is not doing that. Our bill is not restrictive in that way and uh, uh, is in line, I think, with the sentiment that is being expressed here. So let's be clear about that. So yesterday was a political move by the minister to essentially say to the public, we've dealt with the issue. We don't really need the bill. Uh, and insofar as there may be a bill, this is what's going to be in the bill. So that's what they have done. 
So we have three weeks to shift the thing back. And of course, they are attempting to use the authority of the HPRA to say anybody who questions this doesn't really know what they're talking about. Now, quite obviously, any rational human being who's sitting in this room, listening to the testimonies that we've heard today, and listening to the medical uh, expertise that we've heard today, and the scientific expertise, would conclude the HPRA report is completely and unnecessarily restrictive. So we need to get that across in the next three weeks <clears throat> through a very sustained uh, campaign, a very well organized, coordinated and sustained campaign to ensure they do not gut and dilute this bill in the way they clearly are setting out to do with the announcement yesterday. There's a difference that we can make. You know, I'm just one person we're all collective together and we are so strong and it just, it's been an amazing movement and it's, it's only started, that's the beauty of this campaign, it's only started. There's a lot of work we need to do and yes, all the time we need to be doing more and more research. We've got to start somewhere and the evidence now is strong enough in my view to definitely start the process by making it legal.